The fear of soldiers' invasion in Bayelsa and Delta states continues to occupy the minds of many Niger Delta residents, especially those who are innocently going about their daily activities. However, troops of the Nigerian army have continued the manhunt for the fleeing militant leader and his gang members, suspected of having carried out the killing of 17 soldiers last Thursday at Tukwama community in Ugeli South local government area of Delta State, combing creeks and hideouts across Delta and Bayesa states. At a meeting with the State Traditional Rulers Council in Asaba, Delta State Governor Sheriff Oberawuri warned traditional rulers against shielding suspects involved in the killing of soldiers in the Okwama community. Any kingdom, this has happened to people, any kingdom that is hiding them, you should know that that kingdom to will face the same rules. Don't hide anybody or shield anybody. You see what Mr. Mr. President, all of this people have, they also assure that innocent people will not be disinvited. It's only when you provide, anybody that provides, you will not go free. You not go free. So I don't like that you not come and kill people. I bring people, I told you no, nobody to cheat them. They are in your kingdom, feed them out. You know, they will bring trouble to your kingdom. Any traditional ruler who is cheating any criminal, why do those persons that have this evil act? That young ruler will also have his own problem and his own problem. In the meantime, the paramount ruler of Ibumotoru in Bayesu State, His Royal Highness Asenia Ufongo, has disputed claims that innocent persons have been killed during military operations in the area. Two communities, all in Delta State, had that problem of a marginal oil well among the robos and the jaws who is having the power or uh, whose oil well is that, that type of misunderstanding that arose from the two communities. And at the end of the day, one of the parties invited a magwin to intervene. And he went there and some military officers who were there to make the peace were shot dead. They went into Bumataru too and began to burn down or kill everybody. No. The place where the person is located is where they went and the attack took place. They had the information that uh, a magman went there and is staying in Igumataro. So they followed to Igumataro and wanted to arrest him. As if they were trying to arrest him, his boys who were there became stubborn with them. And they did that. And that fire began to happen. The firing incident happened. And some of them that were cut down because they also killed senior army officers to where they went to. I just got a letter from a momentary community. It just here with me, uh, saying that over 80 persons were just killed. The momentary, some of them were just standing by the jetty, not knowing what was there. In fact, when the military officers uh, came, they thought it was the same military officers that conventionally guiding the critical facilities. They never knew, right? But before they knew it, over 80 of them were reportedly killed. This is a letter from the Gomotor community. As we speak, those left in the community cannot gain access out of the community. Nobody can go into the community, so there's no supply of food. People are not dying of starvation in the Gomotor community as we speak. Water cannot go in. In fact, the, the water is already polluted because of the serious, uh, dead bodies that are now floating on the river. We also learned that the military officers are going from one place to the other, searching for uh, whoever the criminal. But we're saying that, look, they should spare innocent people. I'm very professional also. Meanwhile, at a meeting with members of the House of Representatives Committee on Defense, the Chief of Defense Staff indicated that a major suspect has been identified. 
basically, it was a community clash that was happening, and those are his own area of responsibility. And that's why he responded when initially he stood as his officer, some soldiers were arrested while they were apprehended by the communities. We know that because of this uh, issue of concrete, uh, uh, we have a lot of pirates, terror, uh, militants that are still operating within the general area. And they have a lot of funding because of the illegal activities they carry out. So they only call they have a lot of uh, arms with them. Uh, these are people they know, and that's why when he had it, he felt that uh, these are my community, these are people I know. And he went to say, look, this we are doing is not right. Whatever it is between the community, we can do it. And by the state government, let them come and handle it, the state government issue and all these things. And the community said, okay. And as they talked to go, they were handed up, killed. Not only killed, they were dismembered. And I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, for a human being to go to that extent to do for people that came on peaceful means, then that's something that goes beyond that. I know him, the CEO himself, for example, and the officers, because we're emphasized, we want the oil production of Nigeria to increase so that we'll be able to have enough for everything and then things can really go down because we all know the challenges we're going. And so he insisted that all illegal activities within the general area must stop. So he directed all his troops and we were stopping all these illegal concrete, stopping all these things, and then these are the people benefiting from it. And so when this issue came, I think it came as an opportunity for them to also do and do a meeting. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, we know who did, who did it. We are following up on him, and it's just a matter of time. We are sure we're going to get it. So they took away in arms. We must get those arms back. Joining us now on this show is Liboro Soshoma, a lawyer and human rights activist. He's joined by Blessed Ugeri, the Urubu Progress Union President of the Youth Wing Worldwide, and Honorable Henry Daniel Ofongo, a former member of the Federal House of Representatives. Gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Well, we seem to have uh, Liboros Ushuma with good us already morning. in the studio, and then Honorable uh, Ofongo, right? Henry Ofongo, thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Well, gentlemen, very quickly, uh, Liboros, you are in the studio here. Let me start with you. There have been some legal aspects of this matter. One, people have raised complaints about uh, the military uh, operation uh, from uh, Okwama to uh, Igbamaroto, and also there's one community called the Lota community, and other communities where we're told that the military have given the people deadlines to produce the militants the, uh, who may be involved in the uh, crisis in the Okwama or face uh, consequences. And then there are persons who have been saying, well, Okwama community will brief, you know, uh, lawyers and they will go to court the same way the Odu community went to court in 1999. What will be the grounds of the action? And then general allegations about, you know, innocent persons being caught in the crossfire. So we'd like to have your general perspective. And then after Liberos here, Honorable Henry Daniel uh, Ofongo, we also like to have your take in this matter, Liboros, if we may start with you. Yeah, um, first and foremost, um, every Nigerian and um, a lot of us, we sympathize with the families that have lost their loved ones. Um, nobody wants, um, especially in the military, nobody wants to, even though you sign, signed up to defend with your today so that our tomorrow can be peaceful, but no, no, no military officer wants to die in the hands of civilians that they are meant to protect. Um, so that said, um, also in the same vein, you find out that when the military consistently begins to get involved in civil activities, you are bound to have this kind of crisis and the military gradually will begin to lose its reputation. So what we have, there have been accusations about the military behind you. Remember when we discussed the issue of bunkery here, there were allegations that behind every bunker, there are military officers who are protected. You cannot di discuss crisis, militancy, and military intervention in the Niger Delta without talking about the oil. So it's not a, just a boundary dispute. It has to do with a land that has natural resources. So that's, that said, the military, even if the corporates, they know the corporate, even if they arrest that corporate today, this, there, are, there are laws in this country that guides how an accused person must be prosecuted. 
the accused is still presumed innocent. Even if you catch him red-handed, do it. You are not, you do not have the power to take the laws into your hand or to get involved in the extrajudicial killing. Yeah, the military will talk about um, collateral damage, but the, what we are doing here, what we are talking about here is there is no communal clash. It wasn't as if there was a communal clash and the military went in, went in there. Or that, oh, there, there is a, um, what do you call it, a war in uh, Okwama or Okolo, Okoloma community. And so, uh, because of that, the community now went in there and trying to recover guns or trying to, you know, quell the war. But this case is a case of some militants who have taken the laws into their hands. And in the search for those militants, there should be a, a, a strategic and systematic approach to it. And since the military also is involved in this, there have been accusations against the military also. I do not think that the military alone should be the one that should be carrying out this search. They should involve the DSS, also involve the police. In the first place, if it's a boundary dispute, it is not within the jurisdiction or the realms of the powers of the military. It's a purely a police state. And then secondly, as we speak, I do not understand why the state governor of Delta State will be warning traditional rulers. Yes, it is good. Nobody should shield anybody. But as we speak, the governor should have set up a, a, a commission of inquiry to actually unravel what led to the crisis. Instead of this um, uh, one story there, half story there, and you know, at the end of the day, all of this will fizzle out. And like Fela once said, when all of this is over, they will leave sorrow, tears, and blood. We should avoid all of this extrajudicial killing because it's, in the mili it's a military, and so they have a right to take laws into their hands. Those that have died, we empathize with them. We're sorry that this had happened, but the only way military can avoid the repeat of such occurrence in this region is to ensure that you know the law is systematically and practically carried out. These people are arrested and handed over to the civil authority for prosecution. But the idea of shutting down the entire village and not allowing access into it, even the, governors cannot, the governor cannot assess that community, nobody can assess the community, it will give room for rumors and, um, and, and hearsay. So if you, you have identified that um, the man that is involved is General Amagbein, yes, allow others who have their lawful duty to go about their normal activities. Instead of just shutting down the entire village, and then you know there is there are pictures and videos of people killed extrajudicially. Even if they are militant, there are procedures for for prosecuting. Is he a general of the Nigerian Army? You know we have a lot of generals in uh, Niger Delta since the the crisis in the Niger Delta. You've heard of General Boyloof, General uh, this General that. They all are generals, and so <laughs> we have so so bastardized that word general. That you know, every Tom Dick and Harry that has boys, you know, would have generals and would call himself general. So, and that's also that's another thing. That's why the federal government should be very strategic in this. And people also already saying because it's a, a PDP state, and that that's why the governor is not um, even allowed access into it. That it shouldn't be because somebody had asked me if this were an APC state, would the governor? Would the military stop the governor from assessing that community and also assess the damage? So if at the end of the day you arrest these um, corporates or the general Amagben, are you not going to hand him over to the civil, civil authority for prosecution? These are the questions. And then in prosecuting, how will the civil authority, when the military had done the damage, and um, how will the civil authority now gather evidence to prosecute? Are you going to hear that side of the military alone and leave out the side of the civilians? Okay, I asked if the community can go to court. As the yes, yes, the, com the community can go to court on this because it's like the politicians, the political class are scared to talk, to speak out. What they say in, in private is different from what they say in public. Okay. The community can actually assess the okay, court. Let's go to Honorable Henry Daniel uh, Ufungo. And then I understand that uh, Blessed Ugeri, the president of the Robo Progress Union Youth Wing Worldwide, has now uh, joined us. So... Uh, let's hear from you, Honorable Henry Daniel Fungo, and then we'll hear from uh, the president of the Youth Wing, Yorubo Youth Wing. Honorable Henry Daniel Fungo, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you, Mr. Abati. Uh, first and foremost, let me you know, express my profound condolences to the families of the slain soldiers. Uh, that being said, uh, I want to say that uh, today, Ibumatoro, I hail from Ibumatoro community, which is presently the epicenter for the search 
for the suspected uh, killers of these uh, uh, military men, our personnel. So, uh, yeah, it was on Sunday, it came to my notice to, yes, I was contacted by uh, the ADC of my state governor to know what was happening in my community. And uh, I had to make preliminary, you know, calls to the village and, you know, found out that, you know, of course, with credible sources, found out that based on uh, what happened in Okwama community, the killing of the soldiers in Okwama community. So the military has uh, the intelligence report that the suspected killers uh, are in my community, in the Bumatoro community. So from the report I had, the soldiers really came that the first gunboat arrived. And what they could hear was drumming, drum beats from the opposite side. Because if you, if you go to a Bumatoro community, a Bumatoro is made up of five to six communities. But the two major ones, a Bumatoro one and the Bumatoro two, are opposite each other of the Sankana River. I am from both the Bumatoro one and the Bumatoro two. So the people, they, when they heard the drum beats in Ibumator 2, at the jetty where uh, uh, Amagbe, who presently, as it stands now, is a suspect, they went straight to that jetty and the drum beats started. Of course, you know, in most, you know, at times, you know, his boys are always there. So with that, the second gunboat came. And because of the war cries from the boys that were on the jetty, the soldiers, you know, felt they were being confronted. I think that was where the shooting started. And uh, the rest of the community, as it stands now, is peaceful. I want to say that, you know, there are so many stories and the rumors and narratives out there that the Gumatoro community is being invaded by soldiers, innocent people being killed and all that. Well, till now, even this morning before I came for this interview, I've even made my calls. 10 persons in Ibumatoro died. 10 persons. For now, the names of the 10 people that are given are people from Ibumatoro community. Now, these 10 persons that died why we are they there? I think that will be the now, that will now be the next questions. Why we are they there at that place? We are, you know, the suspected killers. Eh? We are staying. That should be the next question. And when they say, though, buildings, houses, we are raised down. That is not true. That is not true. The place we are the suspected uh, killer, as they would say. Is, that was the only building that was burnt down. So I think uh, I would even at this point urge the military to allow you know, journalists to go in, to allow people to go in, so that people can have their independent you know, view on it. And then you know, the truth should come out. You see, a community where you have hoodlums, miscreants running the show is not really good. I'm from that community. And I know what's happening there. We have tried to make sure that, you know, harmed youths, what's the essence of youths holding guns? What's the essence of youths keeping uh, harmony in communities? We are people are now gripped with fear. People cannot even come out to do the things they want to do. Before you ever you do anything, uh, you must have to take permission from those harmed youths. You can imagine a situation we are a paramount ruler of a community. He's driven out of the community because he is opposed to bunkering activities, opposed to militancy. So some persons who are co-ops to these kind of activities would want this man to be chased out at gunpoint. We've tried every you know, means to make sure that you know, all these things are resolved. I think we are even in the brink of it before this incident is happening. So yeah, that narrative that uh, uh, I know, you know, when people, you know, do some kind of things, they want to look for every avenue for people that will support them and start, you know, calling, 
uh, people giving out false information. Okay, the Bumatoro community no, is not invaded. Yes, the place is being cordoned off by the soldiers because of okay, the search honorable. for the suspected killers. I want to, you know, uh, say yes. Okay, honorable. So for now, all what we want to urge the military to do is to allow people to go in. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, honorable, let's hear quickly from uh, Blaise Dugere, President Worldwide of Urobo Progress Union Youth Wing. President, over to you. Hello. Blessed Ugeri, can you hear me? Okay, looks like we have uh, some issue with the connection there. Vimbai? Right. Um, I'd like to come back to you, Honorable uh, Henry Daniel of Fongo. Uh, the area is cordoned off. You've confirmed killings just from this morning. Uh, can you give us a better picture of the total killings that have taken place? Then secondly, there are reports that are circulating that uh, Ibomoturu community is at the brink of starvation. In fact, some people are already starving since the military has cornered it off. It's not just journalists or uh, civilians who can't go in, even humanitarian aid cannot go into this. Uh, and once you address that, uh, Laboris, I'd also like for you to, to, to shed light on the fact that uh, you look at Okoma community, you hear reports that women and children have been in hiding in the forest without food for the past six days. Uh, Senator Dafinone had put forward a prayer for relief from the National Emergency Management Agency, which was, uh, which was rejected in the Senate plenary. So my question is, who is supposed to come to humanitarian aid for these communities, displaced people? Uh, it's brink of starvation, all of these stories. But uh, Honorable Henry Daniel, if you can just give us an insight, starvation in Ibomoturu and, uh, you, you know, the total number of killings. You said 10 this morning, the total number. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, you know, uh, from Sunday when the incident happened, I've been making calls. You know, when it happened, of course, you know, people couldn't just, you know, ascertain the number. Up till now, we are here, you know, so many people died. That's what I'm saying. As at this morning, it is 10 that I know that are from a matter of community. Because the thing is this, you know, that place is a place that, you know, people from every area come to. That place where they are, you know, searching for the suspected killer. That's a place where you have people from different communities, different states come to converge to do whatever they want to do. And those are the things we are opposed to. Then, um, coming to the cordoning off of the place, yeah, it's true. Yeah, people are starving. Of course, when, you know, uh, food cannot come in, uh, people cannot go out, you know, that, that definitely there will be starvation. That's why, you know, I'm appealing uh, to the military. Yes, they've done a good job by not, you know, going to say uh, out of anger with what happened in OD, you know, the last time to start raising houses. I think this time, you know, they conducted themselves very well by going straight to the place where the suspected killer is. So, in as much as they've done that, let them equally allow, you know, access uh, of food, uh, humanitarian uh, aids to go in. Because if, if you keep the people there, they will be frustrated and they will, they will, hung, they will be hungry. Of course, they cannot allow people to starve to death. And as, it's, as it is right now, there is hunger in the place. Yes, it is true. There is hunger in the place. Then. Uh, 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 like the military themselves too. Of course, if they say that there is no food, because they too, they are equally going to the same community to buy things to eat. If everything gets finished, they will be frustrated. And we don't want it to be that, you know, frustration now will be carried out uh, on the uh, okay. innocent people. And, uh, and another thing I have to say, you know, out of fear, when the military came, yeah, really people ran into the bushes because of, you know, the stories that always happen, you know, that always comes out out of uh, when military, you know, a presence is somewhere, when there are crises like this, yeah. I even spoke with some of my uh, kinsmen that were in the bushes. I told them, no, come out. You people, are, you people did not do anything. They will not go there and start killing innocent people. As I speak with you today, so many of them have even come out. Yeah, some of them who have found themselves in neighboring communities. Okay, yeah, let them be there for a while. So it is not true that, oh, people are being killed unnecessarily. Okay. No, that's not true. But okay. the truth is that, yes, Okay. Right now, there is starvation. So okay. we want the place to be open. We want people to go in, not okay. only journalists, let food, everything, okay. the normal business activities go on with the military, okay. you know, doing their routine checks. Thank okay. you. Okay, so Honorable Daniel, you just confirmed everything they said, you know. There's starvation, there's killing, people have run to the bush, indiscriminate killing. You say just 10, 10 people 
those like they are not human lives. Like there's a justification for the killing of just just ten people. Is that how we roll in the country now? If amnesty talk now, we say they no, are talking. No, 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 that, no, no, no. I don't want to. Please, sorry, please, excuse me, please. please. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I, also, okay, the, the president of the, uh, I think it's the Ijo uh, Council, uh, Ijo National Congress, was talking about the fact that he got letters of how many people, over 50 or 60 people. Yes. And in fact, I, I also like you, a very honest man. You said it with your Omar. You said just 10 people yeah. that I know about. So there might be more. So what you know yeah. is just 10. You are a very honest man. God bless you. But you have just confirmed everything they said. I want uh, Mr. Liberos to have rebuttals to you, but I want to also like uh, the representative of the UPU. If you can hear me, please. I want you to come in here. As of today, uh, the, the community in Delta has not been opened up. What's your take? What's the reaction of the UPU Youth Congress you know, to all of this that is happening? I want your take on that. Then I also want uh, Mr. Liberos Oshoma to react to you, but I want you to also react to the things I've said. So I'll come to uh, UPU first. How are you, sir? Can you hear me? Blessed? Yeah, I can hear you. Good morning. So go ahead. What, what's your Good reaction morning, to all of this? The fact that Okwama community has not been opened, even the governor, Sheriff Uburuwori, has not been able to have access to the place. Uh, first, uh, the UPU, the youth wing, we commensurate with... Uh, uh, the, what has happened, the death, the families of the military and that of our Koma people. And having, be, having said that, we should know that uh, after our compass, if something has happened of this magnitude, what should be left is how to look for a way to resolve the issues. And how do we resolve the issues? One of the best ways to resolve the issues is to set up, like everyone has cried, set up an independent uh, an independent team to investigate this issue. And in this position, there is no way investigation can go on when Okwama community is being locked up. How do we know the truth? A lot of questions have been asked at this moment from the Robo youth. They have been asked, just like the, uh, the Speaker of the Senate House, uh, Senator, Senate President rather, the Senate President rather said, he said, these persons are not from Niger Delta, that the government should go in and investigate them. And if they must investigate them, the place is locked up. How do you expect the truth to be brought out? When there is no access into the community of where this thing of happening, there is no access, even the governor cannot access it. We saw the commissioner of police complaining that he cannot access it. Our women and children are still in the bush. Our mothers, our elderly people, Okwama people, are in the bush who do not know anything. Some of them we are in the bush clearing when it happened. Some of them we are at school. Some of them do not even know where their children are. Some of them are dead and cannot be able to confirm. Their bodies are being looked for at the moment. How do we confirm all of these alleged stories? A lot of stories are flying in and we do not know who to believe. Some said it was 17, some say, and the rest of them. We're not even going to look into a amount of people that was killed. Killing is very, one thing is condemnable. We are saying that uh, uh, it's very, very, it's a distract, it's a very, very bad act to kill the military. But it's also bad for the repress, uh, repre, repressive uh, uh, attack, repressive attack rather, on the community. We are young ones who do not know anything, are alleged to have been killed, murdered, children. Uh, old ones who could not run at the time when the community was attacked. They could not run. Okay. They were also slaughtered. That was the alleged okay. story we are hearing. Okay. And saying okay. that the military have not have refused to okay. assess uh, okay. uh, uh, government authority to go into okay. the place to be able okay. to investigate okay. the actual okay. cause and uh, provide a solution to this okay. uh, issue is worrisome to us. It's, uh, it's not something that uh, we, we appreciate thank you, at the blessed. moment. Thank you, Blessed. Hey, I'm going to come back to Honorable Henry Daniel. I want you to respond to the things I've said. But if the community is that peaceful, yes, uh, why are you making calls to get information? <laughs> why are you not in the community as yes, at this uh, morning? Why have you not gone there? Okay, thank you. There's yeah, internet you there. You'll be able much. to do the interview from uh, here. Sarufai. Yes. 
Yeah, Mr. Rufai, yes, I sir. did not uh, you know, say that that place is not cordoned off. Uh, I will still confirm that the place is cordoned off. No, but you're telling people know, to come out now, like so why are you not there yourself? Uh, Mr. Rufai, one, I will be there. I would even grant interviews to you uh, if your team will be there. I'll be there. I am somebody who does not run away from my people when there are a crisis. And then, too, I want to correct that thing which you are saying that I say total number of 10. Now, let me correct you. I did not say that that is the total number. I said that they said people were killed, but I've been making calls, making findings, because for now the place is cordoned off. I came down from Abuja because of this as soon as I heard it. And from the calls I've made, they've confirmed 10. Like I said, that place is a place that you have several people from other communities to go. So if people from other states and other communities are being killed and the, and the people in the Bumatoro uh, does not identify those people, will they be able to give me their names? I asked, because up till now, nobody knows the total number of people that have been oh, killed. Okay, so there are more than 10, the ones I know that are from the Bumatoro community. The ones you know For are For now, dead. nobody uh, can ascertain the number. That, yeah, they say there are killings. People have died. Okay. So if people have died, I want to get, because for you to say so-so-so number is being killed, you should be able to. The military has come out to tell you 17 people, uh, 17 soldiers were killed. They've given you the names. They've given you, uh, you know, their ranks. So should I come out and then begin to tell you that 150 people are killed, and then you can now ask me, do I have the evidence? Right now, if you tell me the 10 people so far that you know, do you know their names? I have their names here. Okay, so and they are from the Igmator community, okay, let me okay. tell you. So, so those my are the mother, my father, they are from there. Okay. So, so, so don't, force, don't force what I did not say. Okay, hang, uh, on, to a me. And hang on a minute. Let me equally tell you, I, I, I did not subscribe to prejudicial killing, I mean uh, extrajudicial killings. Yeah. Yes. If people are to be arrested, if they did not commit any crime, I don't subscribe to killing people because they are suspects. These people should be arrested. Yes, if you know that you are free, give yourself up. Let them do the okay. real, you know, proper investigation. Very good. Then, you know, uh, uh, Ve let them all take, uh, take its place. Very it's good. not Mr. by Mr. saying Mr. Mr. that, Harry uh, oh, uh, what I'm saying is that I, uh, it's Harry my community. Daniel. I can go. Mr. Once Harry the place Daniel. is open and we are making efforts to open it. Mr. Harry Daniel, it's yeah, the same thing you. we are saying. In fact, I was saying you are a honest man. You said based on the call you got, it was 10 people they told you they've, they've been killed. That's based on what you know. They could have been more. Have no 10, saying? listen. I said 10 Ibumatoro people. Okay, and there so, are people from other states and that, other LGs, and, and our people cannot so that, identify those. So, so, so nobody has more. the total number yet. Okay, okay, so Mr. Henry, I mean, it's just possible. like what you also said, that yes. you are even calling people that they should leave the bushes. And that's why I was asking, why are you not there yourself on ground? If you are calling people to leave the bridge, liberals, I'm sure you want and to And I have told you, I am not there right now because the place is cut on off and I will go there. Okay, it is okay, my no community. problem. That's Nobody the two liberals, please. And have, your, and have your say. Thank yes. you, Mr. Henry. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> thank you. I, I like the fact that, um, let me start from um, the fact that militancy had completely, or almost overrunning the Nigel Delta. And um, if we have to clear out those uh, boys from the bush, this is not the way to go about it. You remember in 2015, um, during election between um, Siva and um, uh, uh, Seriaki Dixon, there were allegations that, you know, in some areas, militants did not allow voting. In the 2019 general election, uh, state governorship election also in Baesa, there were allegations that um, in um, Nembe area, uh, that militants did not allow voting to take place. In the 2023 general, uh, state governorship election also, even before the election, we in this studio discuss the issues, the open, um, um, the open Nembe crisis, and how the state government you know, declared some persons who are loyal to the candidate of the APC you know, wanted. Also, I have come to this studio to discuss the allegations against um, the running mate of the APC candidate in Bayesa, who said that he was convicted. So it is good that we should clear out militancy in the Niger Delta. But that said, the issue at hand now is the, uh, the allegations that there was a communal dispute, a boundary dispute. And this piece of land, there is a rich oil, uh, is rich in oil resources. 
and Okwama community, and then now, how did uh, uh, Bomotoru community come into the equation? The said general that is being looked for, there's allegation that his mother is from Okwama community and his father is from Bomotoru community. And so, after the, the crisis in Okwama community, the soldiers have moved into Bomotoru community. So the question now, the big question is, if the people you are looking for are no longer in Okwama community, why still keep Okwama community under siege? Then the next thing is, if those you are looking for are in uh, Bomoturu community, is it in the community or in the bush that the entire village had to be under siege? Also, the uh, former House of Rep member admitted clearly that he can't even assess it now, even though he said he will assess it later. He also said from his records, 10 people that he knows, he's not saying that the allegations from his, by, from his community, those he knows. He also said that those, there are people who the community cannot even identify. So that means that there are more people that died. And the Ejo Youth Council president said about 80 people from the records that he has. The Nigerian army, the question now is that, the Nigerian army, while the entire world, everybody's sympathizing with the Nigerian army, if they continue like this, very soon the tables will turn because now you just go into a community, you can't do it off. The governors of both states have not been able to assess. These are supposed to be the chief security officers of these states. They have not been able to assess these places to even ascertain the damages. The civil police that are supposed to provide security for these places also cannot assess the place. Another security arm, the DSS state command, cannot assess this place. And then we're saying that the army is saying, okay, yes, they have been able to identify some persons and they are looking for those persons. And consistently, like I said, the army also have been named as an accomplice. We can't run away from that. They have also been named as accomplice in this crisis in the Niger Delta, right from the days of Abacha. Do you, you remember the Ogoni crisis also? Until date, consistently, the army ha the names keep coming up. There was even an allegation at the point when we were worried then, Rufai can bear me witness. M um, uh, what do you call it? Minor dispute. People will invite Navy. Yeah. They will use Navy to settle scores. A situation, not too long ago, the Nigerian army had to issue out a strong warning to its personnel not to get involved in land disputes. And so if this is a land dispute, and the army are keeping peace, protecting strategic security, strategic, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, investment. It shouldn't it be a matter for the police in that area. Well, that uh, so so these are, these are, these are my, 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 my point. And in, in, sorry, quickly, doctor. Well, in going forward, wrap up. in going in forward, the army should also allow the state government and those people who are in charge of civil authority to be able to assess these places so that it doesn't, doesn't become a matter of just the army side of the story and every other person speculating. Okay, gentlemen. I mean, all three of you have spoken about communities cordoned off, access denied, you know, uh, the governors not being able to access the place. Let me start with you, uh, uh, President uh, Urubu, uh, People's uh, Union, Youth Wing. What would be your advice? Uh, to the affected governors, the Bayesa state governor, the uh, uh, Delta state governor, the Delta state governor where he's been talking. But are these governors so completely helpless? Just what you recommend uh, to the two uh, governors uh, at the center of it, uh, one after the other? Uh, first, I want to commend the effort of the governor of Delta state for having been able to show some uh, sign of responsibility so far. But it seems like the federal government and the military are not doing the needful as it should be done. They are not doing the needful as it should be done. First, I watched a video, let me correct an impression, where Ruben Abati said, Jokulin said, uh, I told the Fini yesterday or day first today about that uh, people from people that are killing. We are not deltas are not people who kill people. Let's uh, clear that uh, a position. We do not kill people, and it has never happened in a robo land before where uh, military personnel are killed 
in our land. It has never happened. Now, going to your question. Going to your question, I came here for just one thing. I, I came here to tell the world that my people, Urobo youth, women, young persons are in the bush. They don't have food, they don't have shelter, they don't have anything. I was with uh, the IYC president yesterday, where we together made a statement solidly, telling the world that Asian nation and Urobo nation are not at war. We are not at war. What we are asking the government to do is to tell the military to stop going from community to community. Since the spokesman to the military has come out yesterday and said they know the people who are involved and they will catch them in no short time, why then go and start rumbling every community? The Ishans are suffering the same fate. It's just that the Okwama of the Robo people are more of this fate because it happens in, the, in our land. Okay. We are calling on the federal government to please call on the military to give access to people to come back and live their life okay. while investigation is being done. This is how it is done in international practice. Well made, Not locking the door against investig investigators. Blessed. How do Blessed. we get to know the truth? Blessed. Okay. Yes. Point well. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's hear from. Uh, yes, sir, Ruben. Let's hear from. Uh, uh, you don't. Uh, you just don't want to allow me to say some things. No, no. We're trying. I to just have not spoken to since time. I came here. We're Will you allow me to talk, Ruben? No. We're Will you allow me to talk? We're trying I to just came time. in and I've not been able to express myself like every other person has been expressing yourself. You should allow me to express myself at least. No, we're trying to manage time. We have just about three minutes to go on this program. Let's then allow me. Everybody has been talking. Let me use the three minutes and talk because I've not been one. I've been the one who has not spoken. We have to talk. Bless Everybody has to be speaking. Blessed. I've not Blessed. spoken. Blessed. Okay. 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 To talk. okay. Take. Take. My take people it. are take, suffering. Take, I am the one, the one who is more pain here in this issue. I am the one who is more affected in this issue. The Okwama people are robo people who are very much affected. People's lives are in the bush. Other communities are in their homes. Our mothers are in the bush. Nowhere to give them uh, so, uh, uh, food. How do we assess them? We can't even assess them. We don't even know where they are. They are scattered around. Let me use this only opportunity I have to call on the federal government <laughs> that we are tired. They should do okay. the things in line Blazette. with the international standard Blazette. of investigation. Blazette. I'm sure we that... want our people back to their life uh, yes, while investigations are going on. Yes, this is why I came here. Yes, bless her. The, your we point, are saying your only one side well story. We are not saying the other your side point story. Is well made. Oh, come on, people have their own story. Yes. We are talking about the military welfare. And what Hello, about the people it. that died in Okwama? Nobody's talking about them. Hello, bless her. Nobody's your, talking about them. Your point is well made. We're trying to wrap up now. Please, uh, Honorable, quickly. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the president uh, has taken uh, address, almost all the three know, minutes. Uh, correct. Yes, I want to correct uh, that impression. Uh, you know, there is a narrative out there, and the truth has to be said. Uh, endurance Amagben, uh, yes, his mother is from Igbo authorities, his father that is from Okwama. Yes, okay. yes. That has to be made clear, and uh, he has every right as an Igbo Mataro man, whether his mother is there or not, to be in Igbo Mataro. But then, when, as he stands down, he's a suspect. So I want to, my own advice is uh, to the military and then, uh, you know, to the federal government. Yeah, the military, so long as I'm concerned, in Ibu I will not say the lie, I will, not, I will never say lies. They are not there oh, harassing people or intimidating people. But in as much as they've conducted themselves very well, let them open up the place because that itself, you know, does not tell well again. So let them open up the place. Let food come in. Let people go about their normal businesses while investigations okay, are coming on. And I want to comment Fongo. the Biosa State Government. Okay, Honorable Yeah, the Biosa Budania. State Government has tried so much because they are on top of the case. Today, they are, you know, equally on it to make sure that... Okay, the Honorable Daniel Ofongo, thank you. these communities thank and you. the pressure for the military yeah, to go. Uh, Let's come uh, to you, Liberos. 30 you. seconds. Yes, quickly. We need to wrap 20, up this program. Quickly, um, before the 2023 uh, uh, state um, governorship election, we saw, like, I, I keep going back to these issues, we saw the crisis is um, uh, Nembe Bazabri, and, um, you know, we didn't see the military very active this way. The government were able to assess these places. And I, my advice would, should be to the federal government, and that's why people are saying if this were APC states, 
would the military have locked out the governors? So allow the, an independent, not just the military, an independent, you know, allow all a compassing a, a committee of inquiry to look into this matter, and then allow the government and the police to assess these places so that the, the reportage will be balanced. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Liboros Oshoma. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Daniel Ufongo. And thank you, uh, President of the Yoruba Progress Union, uh, Youth Wing, uh, Blessed uh, Ugere. Thank you very much, gentlemen.